welcome back to ASEAN News. We have compiled some of the latest stories for you and here they are. Lao President expect in-depth cooperation with China in wider range. Lao President Tong Long Sisolid expects greater efforts to boost bilateral cooperation at a higher level and in a wide range for more achievements. Laos and China should help each other on development in an all-round way in a strengthened cooperation in security, economy, investment and trade, as well as in development of the human resources. Laos will strive to create a favorable business environment for Chinese investors to attract more investment. Now that we've done it, we'll do it to the best. Many Chinese investors have come to Laos and we help each other so that the investment will be fruitful and benefit both sides. Lao President also elaborated on the cultural exchanges between the two peoples. First overhead contact wire installed to power Jakarta and Bandung high-speed railway in Indonesia. The first overhead electrical contact wire for the Jakarta Bandung High Speed Railway or HSR has been installed between Tegaluar Station and Padalarang Station marking the start of the full electrification of the major railway project in Indonesia. The overhead contact wire or catenary guarantees the safety and stability of the power supply to high speed trains. <laughs> The Traction Power Supply System adopts Overhead Contact System, OCS, which is a Chinese standard OCS with completely independent intellectual property rights. The 142-kilometer-long Jakarta-Bandung HSR is a landmark project under the Belt and Road Initiative and is expected to open to traffic in June 2023. All 13 tunnels and over 92% of the bridge and station civil works along the railway have been completed. With a potential top speed of 350 km per hour, the Jakarta-Bandung HSR, built with the Chinese technology, will cut the journey between Jakarta and Bandung, the capital of Indonesia's West Java province, from over 3 hours to around 40 minutes. Ryan Alonso has skipped his way into the Guinness World Records. The 35-year-old Filipino achieved his latest feat in July and Guinness in October certified him as having consecutively completed 3,731 jump rope crossovers, which are done by crossing the arms in and out while rotating the rope around the body. Alonso's other early record was in 2021 when he performed 40,980 double under skips in 12 hours that involves the ropes passing around the body twice in a single jump. Endurance was a common denominator in breaking the two records, said Alonso, attributing marathon training with helping him prepare both physically and mentally. It was only at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic when he took skipping more seriously as a way of keeping fit after fitness venues were closed and activities restricted. Alonso said he wants to break another record, but he was more keen for his achievements to raise awareness about skipping as a sport as well as inspire people in the Philippines. More than 10 people died after an Indonesia ferry cocked fire. Rescue officials said 14 people died after an Indonesian boat caught fire while at sea near the province of East Nusa Tenggara. Videos released by the local search and rescue agency showed rescuers pulling people include an infant and children out of the choppy sea. Search and Rescue Agency in Kupan said rescue operation continued and at least 312 people have been rescued alive, updating the figure from the previous 240. 
Reuters could not immediately determine why the ship caught on fire and the purpose of the journey, but an official at the local transportation agency was quoted by state news agency Antara saying the ship was fit to sail. The United Nations says Malaysia's deportation of Myanmar refugees violates international law. The United Nations Refugee Agency called on Malaysia to stop deporting refugees back to Myanmar, saying it had received reports of hundreds of such cases in the past two months. According to the UNHCR, that the deportations, which included former Navy officers seeking asylum, amount to a violation of international law, a non refoulement and exposes them to danger. UNHCR, the UN Refugee Agency, is seriously concerned over the continued deportation by Malaysia of asylum seekers from Myanmar back to their country, placing lives at risk. UNHCR has received multiple disturbing reports of these forced returns of Myanmar nationals from Malaysia since April this year, and these include people who are seeking international protection. In the last two months alone, hundreds of Myanmar nationals are reported to have been sent back against their will by the authorities. Myanmar's junta spokesman and Malaysia's Home and Foreign Ministries did not immediately respond to comment requests. Myanmar's embassy in Malaysia previously said in a post on Facebook that 150 Myanmar nationals were reported by plane on October 6 in cooperation with Malaysian immigration authorities. It did not mention that the group included former Navy officers. The junta has arrested thousands of people including Nobel laureate and the post leader Aung San Suu Kyi and many colleagues, bureaucrats, students and journalists in an attempt to smooth their dissent. So far, more than 150,000 refugees and asylum seekers, including many ethnic Rohingya Muslims, have fled to neighboring Malaysia. UN Secretary General visited Vietnam, discussed many areas. United Nations General Secretary Antonio Guterres arrived in Hanoi for an official visit. He and his delegation held a meeting with Vietnamese President Nguyen Xuan Phuc. The United Nations is currently helping Vietnam to implement a socio-economic development plan that covers matters such as climate change, disaster response and improved access to justice. Guterres will meet Prime Minister Pan Min Chin as well as Chairman of the National Assembly Wong Din Hue on the second day of his visit. Chinese modernization to benefit world on journey forward. To a Chinese path to modernization. Now, a Chinese media group says China is going to create more opportunities for the rest of the world with a Chinese path to modernization. The Chinese president, Xi, stresses that on the journey ahead of the new era, the CPC will prioritize turning the people's aspiration for a better life into living reality and create many more opportunities for the world with a more prosperous China. The concept of Chinese modernization, among all, has attracted major attention among the international community. The Chinese characteristics as well as fundamental requirements of the Chinese modernization has been specified at the CPC National Congress, which has also made a strategic plan for building China into a modern socialist country in all respects and advancing the rejuvenation of the Chinese nation on all fronts. On the journey ahead toward a modern socialist country in all respects, the CPC has full confidence and capability to work more stunning miracles of achieving prosperity in the country and bringing more benefits to the world. Australia and Japan agree to strengthen the security area. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese and his Japanese counterpart Fumio Kishida agreed to strengthen security ties between the two United States allies amid China's push for greater influence in the Asia-Pacific region. I express my determination that all necessary options for the defense of our country, including the so-called counter-strike capability, will be contemplated and Japan's defense capability will be fundamentally reinforced in the next five years, which is supported by Anthony. 
新たな次元に入ったという認識において一致をいたしました。At the annual Australia Japan's Leaders Meeting held in Western Australia capital Perth, the two signed a security cooperation agreement updating a 2007 pact to respond to a change regional security environment. Albany said Japan's military will train and exercise in Northern Australia alongside Australian Defence Force personnel. Today we have also signed a critical minerals partnership. We have committed to more cooperation to strengthen the supply chain of critical minerals. Including those that are required for building the green technologies of the future. This partnership will mean we build secure supply chains, promote investment, develop Australia's domestic sector, and make sure Japan's advanced manufacturers have the critical minerals they need. A previous joint declaration outlined security cooperation in areas such as counter terrorism, a North Korea's missile, and nuclear weapons programs. The two countries in 2014 elevated their relationship to a special strategic partnership. Albanese and Kishida also discussed climate change, expressing support for a regional transition to net zero carbon emissions, and boosting investment in clean energy tech. The leaders agreed to help build secure supply chains between the two nations for critical minerals, including those that are required for building the green technologies of the future. Well, hope you enjoyed all the news for today. We wish you a very lovely weekend with the loved ones. Stay safe, stay healthy, and goodbye from now.